Minnesota Original is made possible by the State Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the Citizens of Minnesota. On this edition of Minnesota Original, Takumba Aiken is a Sally Award winner, painter, and public artist. His African rhythm patterns begin with black and white outlines he calls spirit writing. Artist and fashion designer Danielle Everine constructs what women would wear on an epic adventure. And Noah Hain layers harmonica and marimba over acoustics with his live looping system. These artists and more, now on Minnesota Original. This is, this is my baby. This is the Gillette Children's Hospital mural uh, done by kids out of Gillette Hospital. And this is what these kids are talking about. Their families, hope, their mom, their friends. There's parts that say, stay nice. You know, and I just took pieces of their stuff and collaged it together to make this happen. Oh, my name is Takumba Aiken. I'm a painter, muralist, public artist, they call me. I do large scale pieces like parking ramps in mosaic or cast stone or glass, but I, I really love to paint. I paint all the time. I have to paint. That's why I'm painting now. <laughs> uh, this is the Lower Town Loss. I have a 1,800 square foot space. I want my place to be sort of like a gallery. Walls so I can hang things up and look at them and study them. But most of my house is just studio. I love to work and I can take all this stuff down and do a show easily. I create pieces uh, that come together into a story. So it's sort of like the spirit. You don't know a person totally, but there's something that connects. It's like my paintings. You don't know the painting yet, but there's something that'll call you one little specific thing, and then it invites you in and you see more. I had to create some fabric designs that um, had African kind of motifs in them. And then I realized in African design, there's a repetitive kind of movement, and it's a movement that moves upward. So I started creating these things called patterns, and then the word rhythm pattern came out in my mind, and so that I just would make a line, repeat it, make another line, repeat it, and it has evolved into this, and actually it's evolved into other paintings of mine that you might not even see the rhythm pattern anymore, but it starts with the rhythm pattern. This is a skeleton for all my work. I create my art to heal the hearts and souls of people by evoking a positive spirit. There's something for everybody, but it might just be one thing that draws you in and then allows you into a, a world as you agree to journey into it. A lot of mine have to do with my mother or angel-like kind of things. This is sort of a continuous angel series. My mother was a healer, so. Some things I don't know how they get there, but they come out of me. Because I have a skewed vision with color, I um, do things in black and white first, and then I color them in like a coloring book. I found out it was a neurological disorder that I had from falling 13 feet on my head when I was 11. What I thought was identifying colors from the, the bottles, but every time I do that, I try to create. So I have to stop and do black and white to calm down and then let it happen. Maybe it's some spiritual kind of connection that comes out. I paint without my glasses on. I paint with and without my glasses. When I take my glasses off, I do a thing called tracing with white lines because I start to see faces and other stories. I have no idea what they are. I just trace them. I have totally faith. I just do it. And all these magnificent things come out. Hey. For somebody to ask me to do my work in context of what they're doing, about people, about housing, about sustainability, you know, about violence, about health. That's where I want my work to be seen. Only way I can make that happen is to keep doing my work 
and for people to keep reinterpreting how it should be used. My whole body of work is a combination of my individual and my collaboration. I kind of value the collaboration spirit. I created a mural on Pilot City Regional Center because it was I could see it from down the street and it was this beautiful facade. Kids identified their home finally as this is the place I live and with pride. And so then I realized these murals that I was creating were like uh, beacon points and sometimes ways of getting back home when you couldn't find. Little kids wander a little too far. They could always say, I live by the mural with the lady with the sun behind her head. The projects that I do, you can't just think them up. I did an absolute vodka ad. I don't even know how I got that, but it's called Absolute Aiken. The grain elevator in Good Thunder was big time, and it was big time for a very unusual thing. Because of the drought, there were people coming from Iowa, South Dakota, North Dakota, Kansas, doing the story of how this drought and trying to follow where it's gonna go. And then this one guy stopped by and said, we need a good story. So all of a sudden, I finish the Green Elevator. I get a two-page spread on the Tribune, a two-page spread in the, the uh, St. Paul Pioneer Press. That was phenomenal. Now I'm gonna start creating things that are like icons, like the ripple effect. And this is the celebration rejoice thing combined. Usually there's just a face that's created inside of these hands outside of here, but this is something very new. I don't, never seen this before, so I'm kind of excited to, I'm always excited to see something new, and believe me, only, only about 20% of what I do is uh, the same as what I've done before in one painting, and then it just expands. It's just like life, you know, breathing. I don't try to, I don't try to do anything, actually. <laughs> it doesn't, that's not a lazy statement, it's just the best way for me to get the best result is to let go. I, I hope my work heals people. I hope my work makes people think and have dialogue. And I want people to walk away happy to take a breath, happy to be on this planet contributing, and happy to know that there's at least one person, because this painting said so, that's there for them 100%. Could be a little bit grandiose, but I think it's still grandiose in a very small way. I consider what I do one grain of sand on a beach, a beautiful beach. And I'm proud to create that one grain of sand. I'm absolutely proud to create that. The idea of the coat is that it's this, um, you know, sort of Arctic warrior woman, you know, that is able to be stoic and yet beautiful at the at the same time while traversing the glaciers of the Arctic Sea. I'm Danielle Verine, and I'm a designer and an artist. I design mostly women's wear. It's often um, inspired by men's wear because I really love some of the details and the utility of men's clothes, but I primarily design for women. This is like a suit. It's, a sh it's shorts and a jacket that zip together. And then I have this quilted jacket that's actually a whole snow suit. So there's pants that go with that as well. All the clothes I make are, I want them to be like equal parts utilitarian and e equal parts beautiful. I want people to be empowered by their clothes and be able to do whatever they want. So I'd like um, someone to be able to ride their bike to work and then conduct a meeting and just be able to control their own world and be comfortable in what they're wearing. As an artist and designer, I never stop thinking about like what, what's next or what could I make or, or what sort of garment would be good for this. I'll be inspired by a film or a book or, or an idea or an activity um, and then that will lead to the clothes because I'll, I'll be put myself in this adventurous situation and then I'll think about the type of clothes that are appropriate for that. 
One of my uh, recent collections is called Call Me Ishmael, um, obviously inspired by Moby Dick. My fiance, David, has a sailboat that we sail on in the summer. And I'm, I get um, a little seasick, so I just started to think about how could people be on these boats for months or years? I started to think about like what would a modern day heroine wear on a transatlantic journey? The really fun thing about this collection was that I partnered with uh, an illustrator, Lisa Luck, who drew a, quite a few images of whaling and ship-inspired motifs that I turned into screen prints and then printed on the garments. It's just a little clutch, simple little clutch that's laser etched with one of the drawings by um, Lisa Luck for the Call Me Ishmael collection. I was on Project Runway season nine uh, it was a very interesting experience, to say the least. It was overall a, a really great experience, mostly because of the people that I met along the way. It was interesting also to be a part of something that creates pop culture. This TV show is sort of defining fashion in some ways and defining what, what our culture is, and to be a part of that was, was an amazing experience. After living in New York for the summer, you know, during the shoot, it made me realize how important it is to, like, come back to my roots and, and stay in, in Minnesota and be inspired by things that I really care about and to stay true to my work and um, show really what I'm inspired by. So this is the coat for um, Avoid the Gray. It's not quite finished yet, so there's still pins in it, and I'm sorry, Kimberly, about that. Avoid the Gray is an annual show that cliche, the boutique on Lindell Avenue, where I sell my garments along with a lot of other local designers, has every year. So, you know, what I'll do is I'll end up cutting pieces like this out and stitching them on and then probably beading around the, the edges of it as well. This year, the models for Avoid the Gray will be inside eight by eight foot boxes. The outsides will be completely white, and then the inside will be this very textural scene um, that's been created by an artist and in partnership with a designer. People will be invited to actually come up to the scene and sort of peer in and immerse themselves in this, this other world. There are quite a few fashion designers working out of Minneapolis. The other artists and designers are amazingly supportive and everyone wants to sort of work together to make something happen. It goes to show you can live here and make a living from your design. It's really a, a cool place to be. All right, so this is a pretty coat dress that um, is from my Pale Rider collection. And that collection was inspired a lot by, you know, the West and riding your horse out into the woods. You know, the idea is that the, the clothes are, are pretty, but you can be rough in them too. But, disclaimer, I don't ride horses. I don't really know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Throughout this collection, I was doing these little appliques that I matched to the dress just to make it a little bit more layered and, and give some dimension and also sort of recall that Western time of, of embroidery and, um, and details that make it special. I'm interested in a new definition of beauty. You know, I think a lot of people have been bombarded with this sort of glamorous look that's been going on for a long time and striving for um, perfection. And to me, real people and, and real adventure and Real activities are what is fun and beautiful, and I think you know people should really be who they are and, and find something in that. You know, my clothes really encourage people to be independent and be out there and, and create your own look and have your own voice.
there's something about that heat and that, that dangerous thing that you can't touch, but yet you can kind of touch it with these tools. And I joke that it's suffering for one's art because it really, I mean, it, it's hot. I'm always just trying to look to do something different, I hope, something I haven't seen before. A non-glass blower might not really know why that's unique, but a glass blower might look at it and go, God, how in the hell did you get that? I have had the studio for nine years. When I finished college, was unsure of what I was going to do with my liberal arts degree. I wasn't an artist at all. I didn't have any real formal training. I took no art in college. I took this glass workshop up in Wisconsin. You know, I was okay at the basics and was kind of intrigued. And uh, this guy and his wife, his name is Jim Engelbretson. He said, well, why don't you come down to River Falls and enroll as a special student? That's how it started. The struggle for me was finding confidence in this kind of artistic voice, which I'd never, I, I don't have a, you know, of artistic voice. I didn't, that was something totally foreign to me. And, and so gaining the confidence to say, okay, I want to make this, took some time. The cane pieces I made first in my studio here because I didn't have any color. And so it's not that complex an idea. It's really a pretty simple idea to just drop these things in there. The assumption is that they might just all glob together and become a ball and, you know, this ugly mass in the middle. But with a little bit of finesse, you can get them to create something pretty interesting to look at. There's something really appealing to me about making something interesting out of clear glass. Stop. I think also as a Minnesotan, you know, as an icy, crystalline kind of thing, it really appeals. We are going to make a piece lined with copper and silver foil. Putting the copper and the silver on, there should be some golds. The copper and the blue will, with the silver, should create some green. First, we're gonna stick the copper in it. Now you start to understand why maybe you don't see other people do this. It's like, why, what are you, what are you doing? And why? Sticking your hand in is kind of off the wall. It's like, you've got to be kidding me. You're going to stick your hand in there? But I really like the idea. This has developed into a bit of a refined dance. I'm going to blow off my hand. It gets hot. But as long as you have these gloves and you can use some air, it's, it's, uh, it's OK. <laughs> this is really hot until it's all lined. And then I can keep my hand in there a little bit longer. The metals are going right against the colored layer in the vessel, and adding that extra bit of mineral to the color and the extra heat, it just causes them to create a whole other palette. It's a little bit like pottery or salt firing in that you put these things together and you kind of know what's going to happen, but there's still some room for serendipity. If the glass and I are on different wavelengths, it can be a struggle. And so when you make a nice piece, it's like, ah, oh, that, that's cool looking, you know? And I really like that. Um, there's still that Stop. kind of surprise that I'm able to make something, you know, like that. And when it's, I think, elegant and clean, and that's exciting to me.
and rhythm patterns, you have to realize the marks that I make, the lines that I create, have been made throughout time. Uh, mine are just a bit different because they have to do with my life and this contemporary setting. But my life is a foot in today and a foot in the past. People use their imagination a lot, but they use it where they feel comfortable. I want them to feel comfortable about using their imaginations with this. And that, that's just as important as what I say it is. I don't say much about what it is. I usually give it a title only after the painting has given me a title when it's done. I'm just inspired by the creating itself, you know, to be able to discover. Minnesota Original is made possible by the State Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.